Hello everybody, this is Frank, and this is tonight's Worldwide Community Prayer. And I'm so glad that you're with me. And you're probably wondering, why, what's going on? This is different. Uh, our community prayer um, usually is inside, and it's usually live streamed, right? Well, we are having a snowstorm today here in the Northeast. And I, I had mentioned earlier in some of my other talks that I would love to be able to do some sort of... Um, talk while in a snowstorm so it's early on a saturday morning and uh, i wanted to at least get this uh recorded so that i could actually put it up uh, up on our different uh, video platforms as a premiere so that we can still talk to each other uh, at least on youtube we can still talk to each other and uh, communicate live, but then give have the ability to do an actual uh, recording in the snow, in the snowstorm. Yes. <laughs> so we, I wanted to have a little fun. And the ducks are out. We're all out here. And uh, it's actually starting to uh, calm down. It was coming down pretty, pretty good uh, before I started. Uh, but uh, we're going to see uh, how, how many inches. I think we're only supposed to get just at least about four inches of snow, which is which is, will be just fine uh, because it'll finish up so that we can have church tomorrow. Uh, but I'm just so glad that you're all here with me now. And so this is actually a pre-recording earlier Saturday morning uh, so that we can be outside in the snow, okay? <laughs> so anyway, <clears throat> excuse me, I apologize. So we have, uh, we have our uh, cup of coffee here with us, um, just, just straight coffee with, with some... Uh, with some uh, half and half, no uh, no sweetener, no honey, no nothing. There we go. And uh, just enjoying this uh, really nice snowfall, this March snowfall. We were supposed to get possibly, at least in my location, up to 8 to 10 inches. And so I'm watching the radar now, and it, it doesn't seem like we're going to get that at all. We're going to probably just get about 4 inches, and, uh, and, and it's going to melt. Uh, it's March, and you, th that warm weather is coming, and so it, it shouldn't last long at all. But but we're here together um, outside, and we're going to be going over the book of uh, Jude. We've been continuing this on a Saturday night, and uh, I'm going to read that to you. We're going to go through that, and then we're going to go through uh, verses tonight. The verses are um, Jude 14 through 16. Those are the verses that we're going to be focusing on. Very interesting uh uh, in regards to a quote by Jude, uh, uh, quoting actually Enoch, okay, and that, so that's actually t we're going to be talking about that a little bit, and then we're going to be going to prayer. We have a, um, I have my list of prayer uh, of requests that have been sent to me and has been shared with me, uh, and uh, we're going to be praying for people, uh, everything that's going on right now in the world. Uh, March is uh, seems that it's it's drumming up for uh, pretty exciting things about to take place. Uh, besides the, uh, the storm that's among us, there's other storms that are, are um, taking place right now in the world. And uh, there's so, it's on so many different angles, um, geopolitically, uh, in the information war, in the uh, financial uh, changes that are coming, uh, a lot of different setups uh, taking place. And then people, of course, uh, you notice that uh, the week uh, the last two weeks where we had the trucker convoy uh, in the United States, you notice that the uh, the government, I, well, let's just say that um, those that are against what the truckers are mandating uh, are literally doing everything they can to uh, raise the price of diesel, right, and gas, um, more than doubling it. And... Uh, yeah, this is this is part of what's going on in our world right now. We're paying attention. Uh, pay attention to what's happening in um, in Ukraine and Russia in regards to uh, the agreements that are being made for this uh, this war that's going on right now. Because you're seeing now um, agreements taking place uh, from uh, Syria. Middle Eastern fighters are now. Um, coming in alongside uh, Russia and this all plays into that um, those prophetic events that are going to take be taking place with Israel which is next if you have been following me up on Facebook and uh, Gab 
I've been uh, I put up a post in regards to really what to pay attention to you know coming next and uh, if you've been up on uh, what to watch for dot org okay w two w four dot org it is a uh, a site that I put together in regards to prophetic um, scriptures and what to, what to watch for. Really, that's that's basically it in regards to Israel because that's the centerpiece. Um, that's really when it comes down to Christ returning, um, the setup of it, the setup of the nations, uh, the coming temple, all of that. Uh, we it, it's all in play. It's all in play. We've seen that in the last five years uh, in regards to. Um, uh, the United States and Israel, uh, and the with the capital uh, being recognized, with the Golan Heights being recognized, those are key. Uh, those are key pieces. Okay, that's going to play into uh, what's coming next because of Syria, the agreements that Russia and uh, has with uh, Syria, and um, and then the nations also that that really don't like Israel. And uh, so you're going to see things like this play into uh, geopolitically um, the next the next uh, big move, and so it's it's going to take time. You know we got to watch history play out, but we're just paying attention to literally what's taking place. I I'm I'm not predicting anything on my own. I'm I'm reading the scriptures. I'm watching how these different things are read in the scriptures. Uh, paying attention to the the actual uh, names that are involved, the locations that are involved, and I'm watching history play out. Uh, we are, we're basically like um, uh, believers uh, in the living God who have uh, come together and have been taught and trained uh, through the Holy Spirit to pay attention, to read, pay attention to the scriptures, and also to filter to be aware that there are going to be those out there that are teaching things otherwise, and and they can be extremely convincing. Uh, we're going to see that um, it has already started. It's been has been going on for a long time, but um, it is really uh, coming to the surface uh, a lot, and um, we're going to see it come up even more. And so, where you're going to look and see things happen, where it's going to it it might look like. Um, Things get really bad, but then it's going to look like it's going to get really good. But it's going to be a um, a false sense of security and peace that the world is going to be looking after. This is future. This is coming. This is what the the scriptures actually uh, tell us. Uh, to th those things to watch for. If we're here or not as the body of Christ, uh, I don't know. We will find out um, as we wait and watch and we live out our lives. Uh, growing closer to him, uh, growing closer to our Lord, our Father, uh, in the reading and studying of his word and loving each other, praying together, uh, taking care of each other. Um, that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be abiding in him and doing what he would call us to do as we move forward. And uh, it's it's pretty exciting. I noticed that. Oh, I wish, I wish the camera had started uh, just even 10 minutes earlier. You should have seen the, the snow that was uh, literally coming down, it was so thick. But uh, so now it, it seems to be, we seem to be coming near the end of the storm. So it's getting a little bit thinner. But maybe before we're done, you get to see those big giant uh, snowflakes that were uh, coming down. Maybe they'll come back for a little bit. Anyway, yeah, this excites me. I, I, I enjoy the outdoors. I think we all do. Uh, this is part of... Uh, uh, when we come together th to enjoy what's outside, and I think the quackers, I think they went inside, or they're they're behind me somewhere, uh, going back and forth. But um, this also record. This is another reason why I'm gonna I'm recording this is because I want to be able to show you some of the photos and pictures from the Pakistan orphanage, and so this will allow me to go in and edit in some of the pictures for you to see. Uh, because um, there are those uh, people out there that are, are helping uh, support us as we uh, continue to move forward in helping the children uh, in Pakistan, getting them so that they, uh, getting them to a place that they're um, secure, that they're taken care of. These are orphans that are there. These are children that have parents that are um, kind of like um, in a bad situation where they are tied to the brickyards to say, um, in work, 
and uh, we're trying to help the, the kids get educated so they can kind of like break that cycle of poverty that's there. And so there are there's an average of about 50 children that we're working with uh, in Pakistan with the uh, Emmanuel Fellowship Church that uh, we participated in helping to build uh, there and they have a, a great congregation that's meeting there, uh, families there. They were going to all be working together on this orphanage uh, project. And uh, so I want you to see uh, that just in the past week, okay, about a week, and, week, week and a half, uh, we've been able to help uh, take care of uh, the funds for the rent for the place that they're at. And then um, taking care of the care care workers that help them, and then all of us, and then also get them ready for school. The school in uh, Pakistan, uh, in their in their city, is starting up, and uh, we got the kids registered, which there's fees involved in that. But then we also got supplies for them, like pens and and all kinds of different things uh, that they can have uh, to be able to go to school. And so we handed these. Um, these things out. Uh, Paris, uh, his wife, and, and some of the other team members that are there uh, were able to go and uh, hand these things out and uh, get the kids so that they have these materials. Uh, and uh, it doesn't seem like it's a big deal to us. It's, you know, we, we would go into a small um, like dollar store and, and pick up this stuff as if it was nothing. But in this country, it is a big deal. And uh, for the kids, it is a huge deal. You remember when, um, when you were young and you were going to go to school and you had all new stuff and you would be able to, to um, uh, take care of uh, your education. Um, it was exciting. And so these kids are pretty much right at that point. It helps them. Uh, they are poor, and so they don't have the ability uh, to take care of themselves. And so we are here to help. Uh, working together as brothers and sisters in Christ. And this is a part that we play uh, in all of this. And I want to thank you all, uh, sponsors on this, um, when I say sponsors, supporters actually, uh, people that have, uh, the Lord has touched their heart to participate in uh, working together, uh, being able to donate funds so that we can take care of all of this. And um, it was done in the, in the past week. Uh, just want to thank those people out there who were able to do that through Patreon and the PayPal support off of my page at frjr.org. Um, and uh, those funds w went direct. Uh, we, 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 I, I didn't know, I didn't think we were going to be able to do it. And, uh, it, it, um, and I shouldn't say that, right? <laughs> but God provided within a 24 hour period, uh, because this past Monday, uh, is when the kids had to have that schooling, uh, fund in to be able to register and God provided it, it, you know, through the, you, uh, all of you out there. Um, and I want to just thank, I want to thank you all out there. We're working together. We're trying to find a better place for the kids. Um, the place that they are right now is, um, is not the greatest place. And so we're actually going, um, the team there is going to different places to see if there are other locations where we can bring these kids that are more secure. Um, and so that's what we're doing also. Um, but anyway, yeah, I wanted to just at least give you these photos, seeing that these kids, uh, these kids are there, they're real. Uh, they are um, being blessed uh, by all of you out there and uh, by the team in Pakistan. If you're watching now, I want to thank all those in in uh our brothers and sisters in Pakistan are, are working very hard for these kids and uh, ministering to the people within your community um, at all ages, but especially especially the children and the orphans that are there. So thank you for participating. All right, so let me, uh, let me get right into Jude. I didn't bring my Bible out here because I didn't want it to get all uh, wet with the snow, but I did print out something so that we can actually read it together. Um, remember that Jude is giving us a warning, a warning of deceivers, really. Uh, and they're at, they're, that they are at many different levels. And he's talking to the early church um, because they, they, the spirit of Antichrist, the, um, the uh, deceiving spirits that are out there, uh, were, were, were in full force at the beginning of the, of the church age. And then we are seeing that Jesus even himself said that there would be many that would, would uh, come to the forefront at the end of the age uh, when, when Christ, right before he returns. And literally that you will know that the time is near because 
of these events, these things, uh, these people, uh, these teachers, these false teachers, false prophets, uh, to say, uh, would present themselves uh, in a in a greater way, and they are, and it's coming where it's going to it's going to be presenting itself even more convincingly. Um, to the uh, to society to the world as we get closer and closer to his return so we need to pay attention we need to be aware and um this is this is what we do we come together and we uh, have been studying getting closer to our lord by reading his word and so we're gonna we're gonna read this through i'm gonna read this through and uh and then we're gonna be uh just talking about those two verses verses 14 actually is it yeah, 14 through 16. So we're going to be looking at those, okay? All right, here we go. Jude. This is Jude. It's only one chapter. It's a, it's a letter, okay? All right, Jude, a servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to those who are called, beloved in God the Father, and kept for Jesus Christ, may mercy, peace, and love be multiplied to you. Beloved all Although I was very eager to write to you about our common salvation, I found it necessary to write appealing to you to contend for the faith that was once for all delivered to the saints. Okay, so you're see, seeing what he's doing here. For certain people have crept in unnoticed who long ago were designated for this condemnation. Ungodly people who pervert the grace of our God into sensuality and deny our only Master and Lord Jesus Christ. Now remember, they're sneaking in, so they're using the name of Christ, but they're denying who he truly is. They're twisting and turning who he really is. So in other words, they're using his name, but but uh, they're redefining who Jesus is. And they're using lots of ways, uh, mostly sensuality, the things that affect your senses, right? Just think, your eyes, your ears, okay? They're tickling your ears. They're doing things in front of you that look real, but are very deceptive. They're, it's not real. Um, ultimately, I should say, it's not going to pan out. It's temporal. Um, and, it's, um, and it's very, very deceiving, okay? So Jude here is warning the early church in their time about this, okay? He says, I want to remind you, although you once fully knew it, that Jesus, who saved the people out of the land of Egypt afterwards, destroyed those who did not believe. So now he's going to go into explaining, right? He's going to go into explaining, um, really, what is the consequence to all this? This is why he's warning the early church not to follow them, because it's leading in a bad direction. All right. I should just read and not comment, right? <laughs> but I want you to see, there's probably people here for the first time, uh, and haven't haven't really watched our worldwide community prayers. We've been doing this now for many many weeks, going through this. We're up to fourteen through sixteen of the verses to really look at. Uh, but you can go back and and check out the earlier worldwide community prayers as we go through the different parts of Jude. All right, let me just read through here without comment anymore. Okay. And the angels who did not stay within their own position of authority, but left their proper dwelling, he has kept in eternal chains under gloomy darkness until the judgment of that great day. Just as Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding cities, which likewise indulged in sexual immorality and pursued unnatural desires, serve as an example by undergoing a punishment of eternal fire. Yet, in like manner, these people also, relying on their dreams, defile the flesh, reject authority, and blaspheme the glorious ones. But when the, Michael, <coughs> but when the archangel Michael, contending with the devil, was disputing about the body of Moses, he did not presume to pronounce a blasphemous judgment, but said, The Lord rebuke you. But these people blaspheme all that they do not understand, and they are destroyed by all that they, like unreasoning animals, understand instinctively. Woe to them, for they walk in the way of Cain, and abandon themselves for the sake of gain to Balaam's error, and perished in Korah's rebellion. These are hidden reefs at your love feast, as they feast with you without, without fear. Shepherds, feeding themselves, waterless clouds swept along by winds, fruitless trees in late autumn, twice dead, uprooted, wild waves of the sea casting up the foam of their own shame, wandering stars for whom the gloom of utter darkness has been reserved forever. It was also about these that Enoch, 
The seventh from Adam prophesied, saying, Behold, the Lord comes with his ten thousands of his holy ones to execute judgment on all and to convict the ungodly of all their deeds of ungodliness that they have committed in such an ungodly way, and of all the harsh things that the ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are grumblers, malcontents, following their own sinful desires. They are loud mouth boasters, showing favoritism to gain advantage. But you, but you must remember, beloved, the predictions of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. They said to you, in the last time, there will be scoffers following their own godly, ungodly passions. It is these who cause divisions, worldly people, devoid of the Spirit. But you, beloved, building yourselves up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, waiting for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ that leads to eternal life. And have mercy on those who doubt. Save others by snatching them out of the fire. To others show mercy with fear, hating even the garment stained by the flesh. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy, to the only God our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen. All right, that's, that was Jude's letter to the early church, giving them a warning of literally what was taking place even back then. And we're, we're watching it uh, really, I mean, it has for a long time now since then uh, presented itself in many ways. But as the world got bigger and now we're in a time that really the tech is there, the technology is there, that the whole world can hear uh, messages uh, we can see things instantaneously that's happening across the world. These voices, these uh, these false prophets are presenting themselves uh, more and more. And uh, there's so many voices out there that we got to be extremely careful about as we as we move forward. <laughs> oh, here we go now. Now we got the uh, the wind is starting to kick to kick in here. I got to hold the camera just in case. Anyway, this is what this is the, the warning that we've been paying attention. I believe the Spirit of God has been moving us to really go over the book of Jude because of what's coming next. Um, we, we need to prepare ourselves mentally, uh, spiritually, emotionally. Um, we need to, as we move forward, understand that these things are not happening uh, by accident. Um, this is actually... This is not something that surprises God. Um, this is actually part of our history, This, what is coming. And we're watching the, the literal setup of it in, in all, with all different parts of uh, um, our world, from geopolitics to, like I said, to even the teachings that are coming down even within the church. Um, all, all kinds of um, uh, things are taking place all at the same time, and, and it's affecting us in, in many different ways. Uh, from the, the gas that we're pumping, the prices of gas that we're pumping in our car, as it plays out in, uh, in the uh, geopolitical realm, uh, uh, even in, mili in parts of the world that people are, are watching right now that are, are facing actually a military action. Um, the, we're all being affected in some way. Uh, in regards to the things, the changes that are coming here on earth. And then we haven't even, like I said today, we haven't even talked about yet the um, what's happening in nature. Um, pay attention to that. I've been, I've been trying to help people to understand of, of what's happening here on earth and, and what's happening uh, celestial in, the, in, the, in uh, our solar system with the sun. Uh, the, all those things, all of that's happening all at the same time. It's pretty amazing. So there's lots of things you can actually pay attention to to uh, on online where you can get some really good uh, daily information on all these all these things. And so we come together here. We talk about it a little bit. We get into God's word uh, to stay focused and balanced. And then we pray. Right? We come together and we pray about this. So the what's interesting about the verses 14 through 16. This is where we're going to go back. Jude mentions. He says. It was also about these, okay, this is verse 14. It was also about these that Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied, okay? So even even Enoch 
way back then, thousands of years ago, prophesied regarding this time, the time of the end, right? As we get closer and closer, that these things would take place. But Enoch is now referencing uh, what Jude is bringing up, the actual moment when that judgment will come against these people, okay? It says, it was about these that Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied, saying, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousands of his holy ones to execute judgment on all and to convict all the ungodly of all their, of all their deeds of ungodliness that they have committed in such an ungodly way and of all the harsh things that ungodly sinners have spoken against him. See, this is the one... This is, this is something we got to really look at and pay attention to because this is literally going to take place. This is not just an allegorical story. This is not just um, make-believe. Uh, um, no, this is actually going to be an historical event. Our Lord is going to come again, and he's going to be coming again to bring judgment. The, the time, uh, the second time that Jesus comes, it's not going to be like the first time. And it's not going to be in a consciousness where all things are going to be so wonderful um, that we're being taught. I think that's part of the teaching that, that Jude is talking about that is coming in. As people sneak in for their own various purposes and reasons, um, they are presenting a Jesus that is not, um, it is, it is not going to be the, the, the humble servant that came the first time. No, the second time, Jesus, he has already presented, he has already provided, he has already come the first time as that humble servant, uh, making way for us eternally through that um, sacrificial gift that he gave that first time. He went uh, and ascended to the Father, preparing places for us, those that are that are his, uh, until that day where the Father sends him back. We're going to see that play out in history. And when he comes back, it's going to ex be to execute judgment, as as not only Jude mentions, not only is the the apostles mentioned, not only Jesus himself mentioned, but J but Enoch, Enoch in the Old Testament. And I thought this was interesting because we don't have the Book of Enoch in the um, canon of Scripture that's given to us, but you can literally read because the Book of Enoch um, has been uh, recovered. You can read it. It is part of some of the ancient. Um, texts that the um, the old Jewish texts that were given, and I recommend people to read it. And you can listen to it actually online. You can go on YouTube, type in the Book of Enoch, and I'll put a in this um, in this video in the description area. I'll put in some links if you want to. Now you might not understand a lot of it, especially if you don't know the Bible. If you don't know contextually the, the story, the stories in the Bible, um, the history in the Bible. If you don't understand why certain things are are um, are said and declared and and if you don't understand you might it might be confusing to you but but I, it does you got to start somewhere right so i would say start with the bible first right start reading the bible start reading the gospels and you'll understand when jesus said to the uh while he hung on that cross and uh, he had the thieves next to him and he forgave the sin of the one thief that just asked him to remember him uh, and he said, today you will be with me in paradise. You'll understand a little bit more of what paradise is. Uh, because if Jesus hadn't ascended to the Father, if he was, um, if, if he didn't go to heaven when he died, where did he go um, when he, he went to paradise? What is paradise? Well, when you listen to some of the parables that Jesus gave in reference to Lazarus and the rich man, you're going to get a picture of literally the underworld, the Sheol. You're going to understand that there are there was a place that the souls of men would go, uh, the place where the fathers, as Samuel would say, say in the Old Testament, when when Saul tried to call him back, um, the, this was a place that was set up, a place of the dead, and um, these are interesting things that that Enoch really has been, had been given a uh, a vision with clarity. Uh, in regards to this place, and also um, in regards to what was taking place uh, on the earth during his time, and why? Uh, because Enoch lived uh, before the flood came. He lived. He was, uh, I think, the great grandfather of Noah, and he um, 
he really did he was given a, a vision because he walked with God and Enoch it says in the scripture that he did not die that God took him uh, that's how close he was he was given these revelations uh, speaking with angels and and it, it was just pretty a pretty amazing writing well Jude is is referencing he's bringing up he's presenting this uh, these writings as truth and that these were prophecies given by Enoch and the fact is, and his point is, is that he is saying that Jesus is coming again. The chosen one, the anointed one. You're going to see Jude. It, Christ is referenced in the book of Enoch so many times. It, it, is, it is wild and amazing when you read it. But you really need to understand the scriptures first. I, would always, I always recommend, read the Gospels. Get the Gospels first. Understand. Read that New Testament. All right? And then, if I mean, ultimately, if you can read the whole Bible, understanding that's a giant historical book uh, that gives you the, all this history, it'll give you an understanding of where Jesus, the family that he came from, uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the Israelites, the chosen ones that God had, and the family that God had picked to bring the Messiah, to bring the light to the world. You're going to get the whole picture by reading the Bible, Old Testament and New Testament. Um, there, there's, no, there's no way around it. You, if you want to know, if you really want to understand all of this, you really need to spend time, spend time and read. Read the text or listen to the text. Um, I would highly recommend that. And then if you want to go into Enoch, there'll be a clearer understanding. Um, in any case, I just encourage you to begin to read and pray. Pray when you read. Say, God, you know... If you, I don't know. If, you know, you might be watching and say, "I don't know if uh, God is real or not." Well, start praying. Ask God if you are real. Please show yourself to me, and then begin to read. Begin to read the Bible, and uh, start with the Bible. Don't start with somebody's commentary. Okay, start with the Bible itself, and just start reading, and uh, ask the Spirit of God to help you to see, to understand, and to know who He is, because this is what's coming. This is literally what's going to happen. You can't, you, nobody's going to miss it, all right? Because you're more than just flesh and bone. Uh, you have a spirit. You have you have a soul, right? This These are things that are part of who we are, that we've been lied to for so long, um, especially in our generations uh, where we've been taught evolution that we're just, there, there is no real God and that this is just um, an accident. <laughs> it's not an accident. Just like this wonderful snow that's coming down on on us right now, um, it is not an accident. And um, there's purpose, there's reason, and uh, we are here together. You are important, um, and God loves you dearly. We wouldn't be having these conversations if He didn't. But things have to play out in a certain way, and God is, in the end, He is going to be judge, be judging over the souls of men, um, and we need to be right with God before that happens and you can be right with God in Christ when you understand Jesus when you understand what he did for you uh, the giving of his life so that you can have eternal life forgiveness of sin uh, has been paid for been made and paid for by him and he offers that to you uh, by just following him uh, coming to the understanding following him uh, giving your life to him and uh, in that process, you you can be baptized and you can come into him and you have a relationship uh, asking the Holy Spirit, uh, asking uh, the Father to uh, uh, give you the Holy Spirit to to seal you onto that day of salvation as, uh, as he will counsel you and guide you as you continue to pray and move forward. Uh, it's an exciting life. It's the, it's the true great awakening because the, what we're going through in this world now, a lot of people are waking up to the various things that are coming, but that's a temporal awakening. This is the true great awakening because it's not going to stop. And the people that present themselves as the answers in this world, it's it's temporal. It's not going to last, okay? Uh, because we're going to see those very same people present themselves as literally gods themselves. And it's it's not true. It's, it's very deceitful. This is what the scriptures tell us is coming. And so we need to prepare for that, okay? Um, so let me finish with this here. Um, 
he goes on to say, Jude, these are grumblers, malcontents, following their own sinful desires. They are loud mouth boasters showing favoritism to gain advantage. You know, so what we're seeing here is we're seeing a selfishness that's bound in the hearts of those that are deceiving others. And, um, you know, I was wondering too, like malcontent, what is a malcontent? It's a discontented person, one who bears a grudge from a sense of grievance. Uh, a, a, you know, almost a, a spirit of rebellion against um, an act of opposition. Boy, are we seeing that today. Um, and you can see it happening in so many ways. Uh, Loudmouth boasters, right? Um, uh, following their own sinful desires, grumblers. I mean, my goodness, um, if we're not in an age that you see it everywhere um, in so many different ways, uh, this is the age. And so... Um, yeah, the, these are the two verses that I wanted you to really kind of just to focus on today um, and letting you know that that Christ is going to return. He is going to um, return and he is going to execute judgment on all those that are participating in this. So for us, we need to recognize who we are, where we stand, who Jesus is in our life. Is he our Lord? Is he our Savior? Do we have the Holy Spirit working in our lives? These are the things that we would examine for ourselves and pay attention not to follow uh, those around us that are um, deceiving, very deceitful. Pay attention to what they're saying. Pay attention to where they're leading you. Are what they're doing um, uh, really to gain advantage for themselves, their group, or their theory, or their... Um, ideology, okay, that's outside the 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 ground, um, the foundation of the actual written scripture, um, what Christ literally said Himself. Uh, lots of these people will take the words of Jesus and they will use it in the wrong way, um, totally out of context, using it for their what their own advantage, and so. You know, Jude is here saying, you know, pay attention. You don't want to be around these people when this judgment comes, all right? You want to be following Christ. So, all right. So that's our that's our discussion uh, today. And then, um, so what we want to do now is we want to pray. We want to pray for each other, help, you know, uh, each other in prayer as we have a relationship with a living God, the God who can do the impossible. Uh, we are going to... Um, uh, bring. Uh, I'm going to mention to you some of the requests that I have here right now, as my pa paper is um, getting very wet <laughs> with this with the snow that's coming down. It's get, it, it is. It's it's not getting any heavier. We're coming out of this. I think it's going to end probably in the next uh, hour or two. Uh, the heavy stuff. I've been uh, watching that radar, so that's going to be good for church tomorrow. All right. So let's. Uh, we got a prayer request um, here. Uh, first, we're going to start with a praise, actually, an answer to a prayer request. Uh, it is from Debbie585. She says that, uh, Hi, Frank, a few weeks ago, I asked the community to pray for my daughter's friends, Mom and Jane, who had leukemia. The good news is, is that she's in remission. Praise Jesus. She had another round of treatment and asking for continued healing prayers. Thank you, and to all in the community. So, Praise God. It has a great answer to prayer uh, as we were praying for uh, this lady, uh, Jane. And uh, we're going to keep praying uh, today also that, that she would completely fully recover. But we thank God for this, this healing. Also, uh, Deborah. Deborah now, uh, she says, uh, please keep my family and myself in prayer. Uh, we're dealing with CB19. And um, she says, I, I thought I was coming around yesterday. Uh, today she feels awful. Uh, her husband's not feeling well. Their daughter and son managed not to get it. Um, but um, she says that her immune system is compromised. And so she she is trusting the Lord. Um, and she is just asking for prayer. And uh, she's actually uh, moving forward with uh, uh, some treatments that she has, that the good treatments. And so we're going to pray that, that her and her husband have full recovery. And uh, there are others out there too. A friend of mine named uh, Manny, uh, praying for his family. His family um, also um, uh, struggling with this, and we're going to pray for full recovery for them. Uh, some some of them older, very uh, much older, and so I pray that uh, they're open to be able to take care of themselves uh, the correct way. And uh, so we're going to bring Manny's uh, family 
uh, in prayer also. Also want to pray for Heidi, okay? Uh, continued prayer for healing of Heidi. She had those surgeries. We've been praying for her. But we praise God that she has come through those surgeries and uh, she's going to be getting better and better. We're going to be praying for her pain management and uh, everything that's involved in that, uh, that, that that goes well. We're going to pray for her family as they take care of her. Um, wonderful family here, uh, Heidi and her family. And so I think, uh, um, I think they're in Illinois, um, Illinois, and um, uh, so we're going to be praying that uh, that uh, everything goes well for her, continued healing for her. Okay. I um, also want to pray for uh, John. Actually, mentions that he wants prayer for his his a friend named Kenny. Uh, so we're going to be. I don't have the details on that. Oh, I just know he did, did just ask for prayer. So we're going to pray for Kenny. Uh, also, we want to pray for uh, a family that's local to me uh, that has a little girl who who deals with. Um, uh, different types of autism and um, she's having um, she's having some seizures and so we want to pray for them uh, her name is Kiera and we want to pray for her and her family she had to go to the hospital a couple of times this past week uh, because it's, it was uh, pretty consistent so we want to pray for healing we want to pray that God would uh, restore her uh, to where she would be able to uh, help be managed well uh, for her family uh, during this time. Very loving, caring family. And uh, I just thank God for them. And just this is a wonderful, sweet girl. Uh, got the greatest smile. Uh, you wouldn't, uh, just amazing um, girl. And But yeah, she struggles with this. So we're going to bring her before our Lord and pray that God would take care of her. And, um, and so, yeah, so we're going to bring that. All right, so that's actually just my short list for today. Um, if you have a prayer request that you would like uh, us to read on a Saturday night uh, in our worldwide community prayer, please uh, send it to me by email at info, I-N-F-O, at frjr.org, and uh, I will definitely uh, put together um, a list that we can then come and uh, bring before our whole community and pray. Now, obviously, there are those other things that we talked about that we need to pray about uh, what's happening in your Ukraine and in Russia and all the countries that are surrounding it. Watch also the Middle East uh, and what's going on north of Israel. Watch the agreements that are being made. Uh, we are going to pray for all the people, those people that are in harm's way. We, wanna, we want to be able to ask God to help them through this process, okay? And also the unveiling of a of um, a lot of deceptive actions that have been going on um, for a long, long time that we're going to start seeing take place as we see some major changes take uh, happening in, in a fairly um, short time. I believe a lot of the chatter that's out there discussing and talking about what's coming, the agreements that are being made the in, in the economic world, financial world, the changes that are coming, um, we're seeing that take place. Uh, it's going to affect all of us, okay? Uh, you can see how it's affecting us now. Uh, purposely being, being set up this way in the United States so that it can drive inflation up. Um, this is not accidental. Uh, this can be actually completely turned around. Um, and we have seen, we have seen this, um, but this is just part of what's coming. Um, this is a, I mean, it's not just coming, it's here, um, but it's, it's going to play out within history. Pray for Jerusalem, right? We've been, we've been uh, taught that in the scriptures to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Now we know that, um, just like in the United States, there's a lot of things that are, um, there's people that want righteousness and there's people that um, just care for themselves um, and do a lot of unrighteous things to to really hurt other people. Um, just like what Jude was saying, right? Just another form of that, just on a uh, more of a elitist scale or a controller scale. People have great influence on mass, mass amount of people. Uh, we see that playing out in the United States, but it's all over the world, Israel included. And so um, where we watch this play out, it's going to end in Jerusalem. It, it's heading in that direction. And so this is what um, 
uh, I'm not just saying this because I'm hearing it in the chatter or at, on those different uh, different groups that uh, we collect information or intel from. No, this is actually biblical. It, it's going to end in that way, and it's going to be literally God Himself that that rescues for for His own name's sake. Okay, even though, like I said, there there are bad people in all different countries. Um, Israel have has its own influence also, uh, but there's a lot of people there that uh, uh, are just a part of it because they're they're living in this this point in history, and so we want to pray for those for those people that are there, um, and um, and that this great evil comes down. Ultimately, that the devil himself um, will be taking taken out of the picture we know that that's coming um how long it, how long is it going to be i don't know we don't know we have to really watch watch and pray and be effective in our area of influence to help people come to know their savior because it's only going to be him that is going to bring a true righteous government he will there's no question it's coming and like i say to people if you're not sure about the prophetic word given about Jesus' coming and how he's going to affect this world, read Psalm 2, okay? <laughs> read Psalm 2 and read it and understand that it's talking about the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the, the creator, the, the only living God, okay? And his son who will be presented in Jerusalem no matter what the world says, no matter what they plan, God is going to um, set things up. And you know what? It's not in that passage in, in Psalm 2. It, it basically gives a warning. It gives a warning to the, to the, to the leaders and the rulers of this world on, on how they are going to need to behave. Read it. It's pretty intense. And then it gives a blessing to those that are in Christ, those that follow the Son. Blessed are those. And so that's where we want to be, okay? And so that's part of um, that's a part of what's literally coming, and uh, we need to uh, make sure that we are in right standing uh, before God um, uh, for ourselves, and then we help others. As Jude goes on to say, we're going to be learning about this more as we get uh, into the ending part of the book of Jude, uh, that that uh, we are literally going to be helping people uh, in, our, in mercy uh, and in patience uh, and in love. We're going to be um, helping people that doubt, that don't know, and, and literally snatching them out of the fire. Uh, as uh, Jude proclaims. Uh, we're going to see that in the future as we, Lord willing, have more Saturday night worldwide community prayers. And so why don't we go to prayer right now, if you would with me. And now I, I'm sensing that the it's now just light flurries. It's actually getting lighter out right now. And, um, and this storm is going to be over very soon. So let's pray. If you would, please bow with me. And, oh, take your hand. Put it over your heart, okay? Even in the snow, okay? <laughs> Even with the snow that we have. Yes, my hands are freezing. <laughs> but I had to show you some of that. Especially those that are uh, in other parts of the world where they don't get, get to experience snow uh, on a regular basis. Um, spring's coming. Spring is coming. And this is all going to be gone. You're going to see a lot of green behind me. The ducks will, and the chickens will be happy. And, uh, but let's, let's put our hands over our hearts now together and let's pray to God. Um, and I, and I, and I do, in praying to God, I do take my, um, I take my hat off and I, and I put my hand over my heart and bow together. Thank you so much for doing this with me. All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time that we can come together outside today, uh, doing our worldwide community prayer in a, in a little different way uh, as a recording so that we can enjoy the, the snowfall uh, together. And we get to share also the pictures, Father, that we had regarding helping those kids in, in, Afghan, um, in Pakistan. And so, Lord God, I pray that your name is glorified. You are our mighty King, our God. We worship you. We understand who you are because of how you've declared yourself in the written word uh, and then the playing out of history 
just prophetic, not only prophetic events for us to understand, but to actually live in. And, and it gives us encouragement showing us that you truly are who you say you are. And then, Father, your Holy Spirit working in us, Lord, giving us a peace that is just completely unexplainable uh, in a time like this as we live life and we move forward. Lord God, you are true and you are real, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. We proclaim your name and we are anticipating, Father, you to continue to work in our lives as we move forward. Uh, place us in where you need us to be placed. Uh, do with us as you uh, see fit, Father, as you call some uh, to very all of us to various things and to some to even very hard things. In either case, Father, we are yours. Uh, we present ourselves before you, looking forward to that great day when your Son returns, when we're called to be in his presence, Father. When that takes place, Lord God, uh, we look forward to, we know that a true righteous government uh, will be set in place and that Satan himself will be bound in the name of our Lord under his power and his authority uh, given to him by you. We thank you for this and we pray for the, the people, Father, that we have just read uh, off our list all the different requests that are there. We bring those before you and uh, we ask, Father, that you would work in their lives, especially Kiera, Father, this young girl who uh, has been having these seizures. Please help her, Father. Please help us to do what we can to help benefit that family and help that family uh, during this hard time. Uh, we ask for healing, Father, in it. And Father, I know that you have provided many different ways that we can um, help this uh, family with uh, different types of treatments and things. So, Lord, I pray that you present uh, also before this family uh, everything that is needed to bring restoration of health for this young girl. We thank you for that. Uh, Lord God, we pray about what's happening in Europe, Eastern Europe. We see the setup of, of what's coming next. We see the arrangements and agreements being made, even with the Middle Eastern uh, uh, factions and, and different groups that are there that are... Um, we can see the movement towards a, a war um, that will... I should say, uh, that will culminate to the actions north of Israel. Father, we see those prophetic events coming. We see Isaiah 17 in regards to Damascus, who we still have here today. Father, just another example, uh, a proof of who you say you are. Um, we have these this setup literally right in front of us from Ezekiel 38 and 39. The prophecies found in the Psalms, Lord God, and uh, Isaiah 17. It's all in place. We're watching these things play out. How quickly will they play out, Father? We're going to experience it and watch it. Um, we look at the word that Jesus literally gave when he said, the generation that begins to see these things take place, know, know that the time is near, even right at the door. And so, Lord, we, we know that things are coming. The storm... The storm uh, is amongst us, Father. The storm is happening literally right now, even in regards to this snowstorm that we're in. I thank you for, for it, Father. Uh, but knowing that it's bringing us closer and closer to the return of your Son, we are excited in, re in knowing that, um, that he is victorious here on this earth. You have declared it in Psalm 2, and we pronounce it here right now. Uh, bringing praise and glory as we worship your name. Please help us to be in the right places, places exactly where you want us to be, Father, uh, to, to help bring this great message of salvation and love, uh, redemption and forgiveness of sin for, for those that are lost, Lord, that they can be restored to you, they, that they can be uh, have a relationship with you and have eternal life. Please help us to be a great influence in love, patience, mercy. Um, please help us, Lord God. We thank you. Um, Lord God, I just pray right now as we close that you would touch each person listening, no matter where they are in the world, Lord, please help them. I thank you for them. I pray for blessing upon them during this time, uh, especially, too, for those that have been, been able to uh, support these orphans in Pakistan and uh, also in helping keeping this uh, channel going. And then also, Father, in helping the chapel on Main here in uh, Kerhonkson uh, that, that you have given this new work for us to do, uh, people providing for us to pay the rent um, in this location. We thank you, Father, for as long as you have us here, please, Lord God, help us to do your will. Um, and 
Father, the, everyone who's watching in their area of influence, I pray that you would empower those listening right now, help those listening right now to do your work, Father, um, but be empowered by you doing it in the exact time that you need it done, um, uh, following every aspect of, of uh, your spirit as it moves in their lives. And I pray, Father, for peace during it, empowerment during it, open doors. Um, pray, Lord God, that you would move in a mighty way for all those people looking for uh, to bring a, um, a righteous um, movement ahead in our world. Uh, all in your name. Um, and uh, Lord, I pray that you would help us too uh, in being able to discern the voices that are out there, what to believe and what not to believe um, as we gather information. Give us discernment and wisdom as we move forward, Father, I pray. I thank you. And Lord God, I pray for my brothers and sisters here locally um, in my community, Father, uh, that are uh, looking to follow your will. Please help them. Open doors for them when needed. I thank you, Father, for that. So with this special, Father, uh, uh, worldwide community prayer that we have, uh, we, by faith, come to you all together in worship and in thanksgiving of who you are. Thank you for hearing our prayer, uh, Lord God, and please Please bring answers. And Lord, Father, we look forward to the day where you allow uh, our Lord to call us home. Uh, we anticipate that. We look forward to that. We want uh, you to know that. So we thank you in the name and under the authority of your Son, our Lord Jesus, Yeshua, we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much. Let's put this back on. <laughs> All right get warm again uh go back in the house it looks like uh this storm this storm is uh is concluding at least a little bit here uh but thank you so much for participating me in, in this uh different way uh tonight uh um you're loved and i uh, just uh thank you for, for being here with me we close we close with a sip of warm coffee oh that's good that's good. Thank you. God bless and goodbye.